Well, good morning, church, and welcome to this Pentecost Sunday today. And uh, we're going to be talking about and celebrating Pentecost today as we, uh, as we look at God's Word a little bit later on. But I'm so glad that you were able to join us on this long weekend and uh, hope that whenever you happen to be watching this, whether it's on the weekend or later on in the week, I hope that uh, all is well with you. And uh, listen to these words as we begin our service together this morning, found in Psalm 95. Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before him with thanksgiving and extol him with music and song. For the Lord is the great God, the great King above all gods. In his hand is, are the depths of the earth, and the mountain peaks belong to him. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have formed the dry land. Come, let us bow down in worship. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker, for he is our God. And we are the people of his pasture, the flock under his care. We are the flock under the care of our wonderful shepherd today. Let us begin in with a word of prayer this morning. Father, we just thank you for this great day that you have given us, an opportunity to gather together and to worship with one another. Lord, I just pray today that as we worship you through music and through hearing from your word today, Father, that you would speak to our hearts and our minds and that you would help us, Lord, to, uh, to be obedient to anything that you may be asking us to do. But Lord, we just thank you for this time together and pray your blessing to be upon our service this morning. In your name we pray, amen. Well, let's worship a little bit together and in a few moments I'll share a message from God's word. How 
deep the Father's love for us, how vast beyond all measure that he should give his only son to make a wretch his treasure. How great the pain of searing loss, the Father turns his face away as wounds which are the chosen one. Bring many sons to glory. my sin that held him there until it was accomplished his dying breath has brought me life I know that it is finished in anything, no gifts, no power, no wisdom, but I will boast in Jesus Christ, His death and resurrection. Why should I gain from His reward? I cannot give an this I know with all my heart, his wounds have paid my ransom. Why should I gain from his reward? I cannot give an answer, but this I know with all my my ransom. Our scripture reading this morning is taken from the book of Romans, chapter 8. If you have your Bibles, I would invite you to take those and, and uh, look up uh, Romans chapter 8. Uh, if you're on your iPhone or your tablet, whichever you may have your scriptures on today, we're going to look at verses 18 through 30 of this passage of scripture as our scripture reading this morning. Romans chapter 8, beginning with verse 18. I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. For the creation waits in eager expectation for the children of God to be revealed. For the creation was subjected to frustration, not by its own choice, but by, but by the will of the one who subjected it, in hope that the certain creation itself will be liberated from its bondage to decay and brought into the freedom and the glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning as in the pains of childbirth right up to the present time. Not only so, but we ourselves who have the first fruits of the Spirit groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for the adoption to sonship, the redemption of our bodies. For in this hope we were saved, but hope that is, that is seen is no hope at all. Who hopes for what they have already had for what they already have? 
But if we hope for what we do not yet have, we wait for it patiently. In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through words, through wordless groans. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. For those God foreknew, he also predestined and to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And those he predestined, he also called. And those he called, he also justified. And those he justified, he also glorified. May the Lord bless the reading of his word this morning. Once upon a time, there was a great wind, a mighty life-giving energy that breathed everything into existence, a power that moved along the waters of the deep, the Spirit of God. One day, a group who loved God was praying and meeting, celebrating a Jewish feast with friends and family unaware of what was going to happen. Heaven was about to pay a visit. A violent wind filled the room where they prayed. Tongues of fire descended, separated, and rested on each of them. The Spirit of God didn't just come near them. The Spirit filled them. And each one began to speak in a foreign language. The many languages of all the people who lived in Jerusalem All those who passed by marveled at what they saw. How could it be that each one could hear their own native language at the same time? Some claimed it was miraculous. Others scoffed and called them drunk. But Peter stepped forward and boldly proclaimed the truth. What the scripture described long ago had now come to pass right before their eyes. I will pour out my spirit, the Lord told his people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Here was the moment. The power of God filled the faithful. The body of Christ rose up, alive and active, equipped and empowered to love God, to love others. The good news continues to be proclaimed. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. And the best news is, for those who believe, the story never ends. The story never ends. Hmm. I love that. That's great. Welcome to Pentecost Sunday today, and I thought I would take some time today to talk to you about what happened on the day of Pentecost and what that means for each of us today. And so today I want to talk to you about the Holy Spirit's ministry in your life and in my life today, how, how, we, can, how we can better understand the Holy Spirit's purpose and how we can recognize more clearly his handiwork, and how we can learn to yield more consistently to the Holy Spirit's leadership in our lives. We're going to look at a few verses in the passage of Scripture that we read a few moments ago from Romans chapter 8. So if you have your Bibles, you may want to keep them open to that passage of Scripture. We're going to look at Romans chapter 8. There are a few chapters in the Bible that are consistently, or or I should say considered to be especially great chapters. they're, They're very noteworthy chapters. There's Psalm 23 a very noteworthy passage of scripture. It's, it's been called the shepherd psalm. We, we, another very popular one, Hebrews chapter 11, which has been known as the hall of faith. Then in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, that's been known as the love chapter. And Romans chapter 8, I guess you could say is what some say is like a manifesto for victorious living. 
I mean, it describes how the Holy Spirit empowers us to live a life of victory. If you were to go back and look at Romans chapter 7, Paul is talking about the life of defeat in this particular chapter, uh, a life that he admits to knowing all too well for himself. He says, and I'm paraphrasing this a little bit, what I want to do and what I should do, I don't do, and then I end up doing the very things that I shouldn't. <laughs> Does that sound familiar? Uh, have you ever been there and experienced that in your own life? Um, Paul expressed this sentiment in in the, in the closing chapters of, verse, of uh, chapter 7, in verse 24, where he says, What a wretched man I am. Whom, who shall deliver me from this body of death? What a wretched man I am. Who shall deliver me from this body of death? The answer, of course, to that is Jesus. You see, Jesus will deliver us from the body of death. It is he who gives us the victory through the power of the Holy Spirit. And, it is, and, it, and that's the chapter that we're going to look at today in chapter 8 of Romans where it talks about the power of the Holy Spirit's work in our lives to give us victory. Today we're, we're going to examine this great chapter and there are three characteristics of the Holy Spirit's ministry to God's people that we need to understand as the body of Christ. And so because, there, the, because the more that we understand uh, what the Holy Spirit is doing, the better that we are able to follow his lead. And so there are three things that, uh, to know about the Holy Spirit's work in your life. First of all, the Holy Spirit is your guarantee of all that is to come. The Holy Spirit is your guarantee of all that is to come. In verse 23, Paul says that we have the first fruits of the Spirit. First fruits, what is that? Well, first fruits is an agricultural term that referred to a representative bundle of grain stocks that would be given or would be shown to potential buyers who maybe wanted to buy your grain. And you would show them this as evidence of the quality of grain that you had available. It, was, it would tell them this is a sample of our crop and if you are to buy from us, you can expect the rest of the crop to be pretty much identical to what we are showing you now, these first fruits. In the same way, if we relate this to the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is our first fruit, our glimpse into the future that God has planned for his people. All, and, and all the things that we experience through the Holy Spirit, things like love and joy and peace and patience and kindness, those things, all of those things, these are all like, they're like an early glimpse of what eternal life will be like with Jesus. In the book of Numbers, as the people of Israel were preparing to take possession of the promised land, Moses sent some of the leaders from the, each of the tri 12 tribes into the land of Canaan to explore the territory and then to come and report back about what they had found. When they reached uh, a certain area in a valley area, they had gathered some grapes and some pomegranates and some figs, and they took them back with them to show Moses and the rest of the community. And this was their message this is an example, friends, of the kind of fruit that freely grows for us in the promised land. Compare this fruit to the current desert menu that we are now experiencing, and this is what we have to look forward to, friends. In the same way, the Holy Spirit gives us the first glimpse at what life will be like in God's eternal kingdom. Life on earth today, friends, is far from perfect, isn't it? I mean, we know that all too well. 
But the Holy Spirit, but, but through, so I should say, through the Holy Spirit, we get a taste of the joy and the peace and the power and the freedom and the contentment that will be ours for all eternity when we are in heaven with our Savior. Now, now that the good weather has, is upon us, has started, um, it's been so nice to be able to get outside, hasn't it? And last week, on one of our very good weather days, um, I was sitting out on our back deck, and I was sitting under our gazebo. And it was one of those days when the weather was calm, there wasn't really much of a breeze, and any breeze that there was was welcomed as it was a, a bit of a cool breeze on a hot day. And I was sitting there under the gazebo listening to the sounds of nature around me, listening to the birds chirping in the trees, and I remember thinking to myself, I mean, how can heaven be any better than this? I mean, it was just kind of, I was on my own, it was kind of my piece of glory. It was one of those moments when everything just seemed to be so good. At that moment, was my life perfect in every aspect? <laughs> no, it was not. It was far from perfect. But God, I think, was giving me in that moment, in those few moments, as I sat there on the deck by myself, was giving me a momentary glimpse of the joy that, would, that was to come my way with Jesus one day. You see, when we spend time with our friends, when we fellowship together, God is giving us a glimpse of the life that is to come. Uh, when we experience great victories in our lives, God is giving us a glimpse of the life that is to come. He's, he, he's saying, in effect, here's the first fruit. Here is a sample of what you can expect the harvest to be like, and I guarantee it. <laughs> I can't wait for that day, friends. In a similar way, in a similar example, in the book of Ephesians, it says that the Holy Spirit is our deposit or our guarantee uh, is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance in Jesus Christ. You know, it's, it's like God is saying, this is the first fruit. This is a taste of what life, of the life that I have planned for you in the future. This means that every pleasant moment that we experience, moments of fellowship with family and friends, moments of contentment, moments of joy, power, beauty, love, and we could go on and on. Those are things that we can give God the glory for because this is a momentary glimpse into the wonder of eternity. You see, the Holy Spirit is our guarantee Here's the second characteristic of the Holy Spirit that I want you to see, and that is that the Holy Spirit is your guide through the challenges of daily living. The Holy Spirit is your guide through the challenges of our daily living. Paul says in verse 23 of this passage in Romans chapter 8, he says, we wait eagerly for our adoption as sons, the redemption of our bodies. And in the meantime, he says that we groan inwardly, he says in that passage, with all creation, right up to the present time, he says. What Paul is saying is that life here on earth is not easy. It's not. And we may look forward to the future of, the, to, to the life of eternal happiness that we will have in the presence of Jesus. But in the meantime, Paul is saying we groan. In other words, we suffer, we struggle. Just like Paul talked about back in Romans chapter 7 where he keeps losing the battle to sin, knowing what he should do, but going and doing what he knows that he shouldn't do. Where does our hope of victory come from? 
Well, in the power of the Holy Spirit, who not only gives us a glimpse of the sweet by and by, he also gives us the strength that we need to thrive in the ugly times of our lives today. In those ugly moments that we face, it is the Holy Spirit that is there to help give us the victory that we need that helps us to see victory at the end. The Holy Spirit is not merely described as our guarantee, though, or our deposit for our inheritance, but he is also described in many passages as our counselor. He's described as our teacher, as our guide. If you were to look at John chapter 14 and verse 16, it says, I will ask the Father and he will give you another counselor to be with you forever, the spirit of truth. Then if you were to go on a little bit further in John's gospel chapter 14 and verse 26, it says, but the counselor, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things. Then if we go on a little bit further in John's gospel, John chapter 16 and verse 13, it says, and when he, the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. Friends, he is our, he, the Holy Spirit counsels us. He teaches us. He comforts us. He guides us. He empowers us. He equips us. He gives us, each of us, the gift that we can, the, the gift that we can use in helping to serve others today. Life is not easy. We know that. But God gave us the Holy Spirit to give us all that we need to get us through all of the all the way to the end to get us through those difficult days without his help without his power that is at work within each one of our lives then we end up being like Paul at the end of chapter 7 where he says oh what a wretched man that i am you see through the power of the holy spirit's presence we are able to say thanks be to God because through Jesus Christ our Lord and because Christ Jesus is the is Christ Jesus and because through Christ Jesus the law of the spirit of life set me free from the law of sin and death man we can be so thankful to God that we have been given freedom that we have been freed from the law of sin and death, friends. You cannot navigate this life that we live on your own without, with, with, with any hope of lasting victory. You may scrape together a few wins here and there. You, you may be able to pile up a few possessions if that's what you're wanting to do. But that's not what I'm talking about here. I'm talking about the kind of victory that fills your life with joy, that fills your life with contentment, that fills your life with hope, even when things don't go your way, the kind of, the kind of victory that bounces back from defeat, the kind of victory that will sustain you through all the hard times that you may face in your life. You'll never have to do, you'll never have that on your own. Because on your own strength, friends, it's just not possible. But let the Holy Spirit take control of your life and he will lead you into the truth that you need to know. He will surround you with the people that you need to meet. He will give you the gifts that you need to practice. He will fill you with the power that you need in order to overcome. Because this is what the Holy Spirit does in your life, friends. Not only does he give you the joy and the peace and the contentment but he also teaches you what you need to know. He guides you where you need to go and he brings the right people across your path to help you. Even the books that you read and the teaching that you hear, he puts you in the right situations. He opens the right doors and friends, he even closes the wrong ones. And he walks with us 
through, this, through life's journey. And if you will learn to hear his voice, and if you will learn to follow his lead, then I can guarantee you today, you will experience more victory than you've ever experienced before. Friends, let me tell you today, the Holy Spirit is your guide to get you through all that we face in this life that we are journeying through. And here's the third characteristic of the Holy Spirit that we need to understand. And that is that the Holy Spirit is your go-between. When you're not sure what to say or what to do, the Holy Spirit is your go-between. This is what Paul says about him. In verse 26 of Romans chapter 8, it says in the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groans and words can, with groans that words cannot express. Then jump down, then verse 27 goes on to say, and he, he goes on to say that the, the Spirit intercedes for the saints in accordance with God's will. He intercedes in accordance with God's will, friends. Think of all the, the funny, the ridiculous, the illogical things that children tend to ask for. Here are a few examples. I want ice cream at every meal. Or I want to hold my goldfish while I sleep. Or I want it to be Christmas every day. I mean, that kind of thinking. Come on, right? The same kind of thinking, though, sometimes can be found in our prayers. Because we do not know what to pray for sometimes, right? We want to pray for big and bold prayers, those prayers of great faith. But we're not sure what we really need sometimes. We think that we might need ice cream at every meal. We think that we want it to be Christmas every day. But we have no idea what God really wants in our lives sometimes. So when we ask for small and sometimes even silly things, the Holy Spirit takes our words and he edits them. And he translates them according to the will of God. A pastor once shared this about his church. He said, our church needed a new building. And so it, and, and as, as, uh, as the church was beginning to grow and uh, they just needed more space, so they began to pray for a specific property that they believed would be perfect for their growing congregation. And he said they prayed and they fasted and he said they marched around the property's borders and they anointed the entrance with oil and then somebody else bought the building. And then a few months later, a better property at a better location at a better price became available and they were ready to snatch it up right away. The pastor said this, he said, while we were praying and claiming ownership and laying our hands on this empty building, the Holy Spirit was interceding for us and saying, Lord, it's not really this property that we want. Let us lead us to the property that you want us to have. <laughs> and that's what the Holy Spirit does, friends. He prays for you. He intercedes on your behalf with the Father. And when you have no idea what to say, then he takes over. You see, the Holy Spirit's work is done a lot of times in the background, so to speak. It, it, because it's, it's done behind the scenes so that Jesus can instead be front and center in everything that we do so that he can be the one that is glorified in our lives. You see, we do not glorify the Holy Spirit, but we live to glorify Jesus. And this, is, and this we cannot do without the Holy Spirit's help in our lives. This life of victory is made possible 
through the ministry of the Holy Spirit in our lives. He's not only our first glimpse into what is to come, but he is also today our counselor, our advocate, our friend. He is our guide. He is our counselor and friend. He is our, our, our go-between. He is our intercessor. He is there for us. You see, the Holy Spirit is all that you need in order to live the victorious Christian life that God has planned for us because he gives you everything that you need. So let me challenge you today. On this Pentecost Sunday 2021, yield to the Holy Spirit's work and power in your life today. Ask the Holy Spirit to fill you with his presence and ask for his leadership and for his guidance and for his counsel and for his comfort and for his intercession in your life today. Because whatever you lack, you can ask the Holy Spirit to provide and he will do it. Because he is, I guess you could say, your personal advisor. He is there to see you through, all the way through to the end of eternity where we have our life spent with in the presence of Jesus Christ. So friends, on this Pentecost Sunday, let's yield to the work of the Holy Spirit in our life and allow him to lead us and guide us on this journey that we are on today. Let us pray. Father, thank you for the work of the Holy Spirit in each one of our lives. And Father, I pray today that you would just continue to help us to yield to the work of the Holy Spirit, to pray um, and, and to continue to be faithful in prayer. Even when we don't know what to pray, we are thankful, Father, that the Holy Spirit intercedes on our behalf. And Father God, I pray today that you would just be with your people, that you would encourage them and uplift them, and that you would help all of us, Lord, to live this life of victory that you have planned for us. Thank you, Father, for this good day that you've given us. Thank you, Lord, for this wonderful uh, Pentecost Sunday and this lesson that you have taught us through your word today. Lord, we just pray that you will go with us today in all that we do and throughout this weekend. Give us safety, I pray, and bring us back again next week. We look forward to our times together. In your name we pray, amen. Well, it has been good to be with you today and looking forward to next week. We will have an online service next week. We also may have an in-person service. At this point, at, at the time we recorded this, we, had not, we have not heard yet whether or not they're going to open up the churches for us to have more people in. But once they do increase it to that 15% uh, capacity again, then we will begin to have in-person services once again. So uh, we, you will want to stay posted to your email, and we will email you and uh, let you know once uh, we know whether or not we're able to have in-person services. But if we don't next week, we will have our online service available, and uh, we will be, uh, we'll be doing it like we have been for the past two or three weeks here. But it's been good to be with you today, and I hope that you have a wonderful rest of this holiday weekend and uh, spend some time with your family today and uh, with the Lord in his beauty and in his presence today. Thank you for joining us. God bless you, and have a great week. We'll go out now with a song. Oh,
glory of the risen Lord, who once was saved to reconcile man to God forever. Every bow and worship you alone. 